Okay, so we are basic, or I'm going to close this one. Um, I'm going to start here. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of the new sequence, CNNs, convolutions, ResNets, right? Um, and then GANs and CGANs, you, as I said, this is kind of where the mini project is going to be and the homework. I, I kind of want to do just uh, conditional GANs, which is a topic I didn't cover in 520. We, we got as far as GANs. So here I'm going to continue CGANs, but this is really nice. Like last semester, students created, um, this to me was like very nice. I, they were, I don't know if students were very impressed, but I was, I'm impressed by this. You can take an image and convert it into uh, the style, the art style of a painter, of a master, right? So for instance, let's see if this opens. Right, so it's, this is kind of the idea. So you've got, this, I think this is a Picasso, I wanna say, and this is just a picture of a ballerina. So then we use art style transfer and it transfers a little bit of the style. Right, um, here it is. So it it basically makes it like that. We did some nice uh, things, I think. Uh, here's a Monet, right? So you guys all know Monet, right? And then we took PNW's picture. This is an uh, official university picture and we made it, there it is, into like a Monet. Right, so you can do this for all your family pictures, etc. And um, so yeah, there it is. So see, it's it's it kind of has that look of water lilies in there, right? A little bit, maybe in the flowers. So this is called art style transfer, right? So that's these are complex algorithms. They use transfer learning. ResNet is involved, right? So these are more advanced. But this is one of the things that we played with. Here's more examples. So you guys are familiar with um, this is Vincent Van Gogh, right? And then once again, we just took the university picture. We applied art style transfer to that picture. And then it kind of looks like, uh, you can imagine what if uh, Vincent van Gogh decided to paint uh, something of the university, right? It kind of captures a little bit of that look. And here's a little bit bigger. Okay. This is the Picasso. Once again, I took the university picture. Right, and then here is the, made it into a Picasso. Okay, so these are kind of the ideas of what you can do. I mean, this is like, for many years I wanted to do this and then now you can do it, you know, so it's, it's kind of, it's, and then the tools are available. Okay, but it's all thanks to transfer learning. You would not be able to do this without a transfer learning and there's an actual set of algorithms. Okay, so we are going to start, so that's kind of what the project is going to entail, the mini project some kind of a conditional GAN or some kind of a transfer learning image-based project. Um, so, and so there will be one more homework, the CGANs homework, which will be just your own data set. And then it's gonna be, and I'll do, obviously I'll give you the code and then we'll do something like this. But anyway, uh, there's more that you can do in the world of images actually. So today we're just gonna explore fast AI and just get into some examples of how it works and then get into some of the basic ideas of uh, computer vision, basically, okay? So I'm going to go to the transfer learning repo. I'm gonna close this paper. Okay, so in so everything that I'm gonna be doing today is here. So you can go to the transfer learning repo and just click on fast AI. And so I will be starting with basics here, and then we'll we'll get into computer vision. Okay, that front folder. So I please don't get onto the GPU yet. Let me get one so we can run this.
All right. So I'm going to go to uh, try to get a GPU. Remember, once again, we need GPUs for all this. If you want to do Arch style transfer, et cetera, because we're using transfer learning, that means we're using really large, uh, you know, neural networks, deep neural networks, or we're using, uh, you know, data sets. So fast AI is similar to transformers. I think fast AI came first, I want to say, and then transformers maybe, but they're basically the same idea. They're just wrappers around PyTorch and TensorFlow that are meant to for you to solve problems really quickly, okay? Um, so that's what we're going to look at. So let's say you've always wanted to do segmentation of images, right? You don't have to build it from scratch. You can use fast AI and see what that gives you already. Uh, YOLO is a separate thing. So YOLO is the object detection tool. We'll cover that at some point later because it's a little bit outside. And today I just want to focus on fast AI. All right. So these are my, uh, so I already have a GPU and I'm going to start here. So these are just all of my uh, Jupiters. So I will start, I'm going to go to basics. And I will start intro to fast AI and kind of give you the ideas of how this works. I'm using Python 3.8 for this one. Okay. Once again, I'm going to use as examples cats. Yes, I'm going to use cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, so we're going to work through this script, uh, intro to fast AI, which I think I updated it. Um, I think it's called, yeah, is cat. Fast AI showcase is cat. So this is the script that you can take from the Jupyter to follow along if you would like. Um, so let's go over here. Should be this one. Okay. All right, so let me clear the kernel. Clear. All right. So basically, let's say that you just want a classifier for pets, right? Right away. So basically, you invoke fast AI. So you'll need to install it. That should be pip install fast AI. Okay. You should be able to see that um, in the in the notebooks. If you go to the first one, intro to fast AI, I believe I included those. Yeah, pip install fast AI, basically. Okay, um, Jeremy Howard, I think, is the name of the person that initiated this fast AI uh, tool, library, if you will. Okay, so here, basically, if you can see, all we're using is NumPy, and then pretty much fast AI provides everything. Now, as I said, a lot of the time, these uh, frameworks try to do everything, but they have one thing that they're really good at. So usually when I think of image processing, I think fast AI, although they do NLP and they do uh, other things. All right, so let's go ahead and run and let's import fast AI. These should run fast. Okay. All right, there we go. So basically, it's got several data sets. You'll see a lot of functions that are part of fast AI, like this on tar data. That's already part of fast AI. URLs, that's also part of fast AI. It's basically this gives you data sets, the pets data sets. We want the images from it. And we are going to untar the data and have basically our path. All right. Then I have this little function here is cat. So the this might not make sense if you read it, but it's basically that the way that it's the the files were annotated. Okay. If the first letter of the name of the file is uppercase, then is it, it's, it's a cat. And if it's lowercase, it's a dog. Okay, so that's how they annotated it. And so basically that's why you do, you know, you take the file name and you look at the first one and you say is upper. So if it's upper, it's a cat. You guys see that? So that's basically the idea. All right, so I'm going to break this up a little bit just to kind of give you some... Uh, separate it out basically to, to see how this works. Actually, I'm going to move this down. 
All right. So as I said, basically here, we're just getting the path and this function just gives you um, whether it's a cat or not. So now I run that. I'm going to run path. Oops. Right. And you can see that it just gives you the, the information of, of where everything is located. Then after that, um, basically fast AI create has these objects for like the data set, another object for the model, right? And that's actually, that's pretty much it. So you can see here, this is for the data set. So from fast AI, we use this thing called image data loaders. And these image data loaders have various functions that you can use, okay? So in this case, we invoke a function called from name function, all right? And then that, we give it the path of the images. Then we're going to use the function get image image files, which is also part of fast AI. And basically we give it how the labels are obtained. And even we can do things like resizing the image. Okay. So once again, with this, as you start to see examples, you start to see the common features. Remember this was developed by people. And so um, they just made some selections as, the function names, et cetera. But basically, once you've defined all of that, then you have your data set, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add, move this down. Okay. So let's uh, run this one, right? So it's it should be loading the images at this point, creating a data set, okay? And then I'm going to do DLS, and it should be an object for the data set. You can see that it's a fast AI data core data loader. OK, so basically, just like with PyTorch, you have data loaders. Here you have fast AI data loaders. OK. All right, then you're going to define what, what they call in fast AI a learner. And a learner is basically the function that does that wraps around the model itself. Notice that it takes in, in this example, several things. It takes DLS, DLS being the data set, and it also takes this, ResNet 34. So this is your first view, right, of what a ResNet is. So I've mentioned this before, but a ResNet is like a CNN with 128 layers or 256 layers, right, that has been, you know, fine-tuned to be really good at image processing. Do you see that? Now, ResNet took 10 years of competitions to finally arrive at the, at the best optimal architecture for it. Do you guys see that? And it's a, this is where the transfer learning is coming in because this ResNet, ResNet sorry, has weights, okay? So that's what I want you to understand, that uh, it's a pre-trained CNN basically. Now, CNNs, if you remember, maybe in 520, we would use a CNN, give it some data and classify, right? Create some classification, predict if it's a cat or a dog. But remember the intuition that if we give it an image, you know, that image is processed by maybe 15 filters and it generates 15 new versions of the image, right? And those images go into the next layer, more filters to create more versions of the image and so, so on, right? So you can imagine that the ResNet here, all it's doing is it takes, taking an image and it's running it through all those filters that have been optimized. So that at the end of the day, it knows how to find a lot of important features like fur, eyes, ears, wheels of a car, et cetera. Do you see the intuition there? So in, in essence, you can think of a ResNet here, not so much as a classifier, but as a feature extractor, okay? It's really taking a raw image and discovering the features of the image. You guys see that? So that's that's a, 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 it's not an intuition. That's like the reality of it. We use these. Another way of thinking about this is that we have a ResNet, which is a CNN, which 128 layers, of which you freeze the first 120 and the last eight you unfreeze. So the update when you're doing this kind of training will happen on the last layers for the particular, uh, problem that you're addressing, but 120 of those first layers are left frozen. Why? Because they're already very good at 
finding edges, finding hands, finding whatever. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. All right. So anyway, so this is the approach. So we take the DLS data set, the ResNet 34, some kind of a metric, and we in initialize the learner. Okay. So that should be done. And then once that's done, we are going to fine tune to this problem of detecting cats and dogs. Do you see that, guys? So we're using the ResNet to process the images, but remember, we're going to train it on this data set of pets over here, where we are trying to identify if it's a cat or a dog. So you can easily see right now how you could probably your mind already is saying, well, if I have my own data set of images of whatever, I can just run it through this and you know I'll have a pretty good classifier. Do you guys see that? So I, once again, you're doing pre-training and fine tuning. In this case, the fine tuning is on this data set of pets. Any questions about that idea? All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna do the fine tuning. Notice that fine tuning does not need that many epics. So it's running right now. Imagine it's, you know, the last few layers are, it's training on those, updating the weights. And then we're gonna use it to predict uh, cats or dogs. This doesn't take that long. You can see it's uh, automatically printing the losses. Remember, the objective is to, uh, you know, uh, reduce the loss. Okay, finished. So now I'm gonna go ahead and print uh, the path. And I did this because I wanted to grab examples of images. Now, I, you know, here I'm using images from the train set, so that's probably not what you should be doing. I didn't split it or anything like that, but this is just to illustrate. Okay, so I, I literally, like, I decided, okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to grab this one, right? So that's a Pomeranian, and that's a dog. It should be, at least, because it's a lowercase here. Well, I mean, this is a Chihuahua, uh, but there should be some that are uppercase, and those would be cats, Berman uh, 63. That's got to be a cat somehow. Okay? That's basically the logic. The first letter indicates whether it's a cat or a dog. So now I'm going to go ahead. I've trained the model already. I can start doing inference now. So notice that we did transfer learning, right? We took a pre-trained model, ResNet, and we fine-tuned it on the uh, pets data set. Right, and now we're going to do inference. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, okay. I've selected um, a boxer, which should be a dog. So I'm gonna view it. There it is, that's a boxer, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and use learn.predict to predict whether it is a cat or a dog. So is that a cat or a dog? That's a dog, right? So it should then, the function is, is cat? So it should say uh, false. There it is, false. And it gives you the probabilities. Remember that it's a classifier, right? So we should be getting the softmax logits um, that indicate if it's a cat or a dog. It's a two-class problem, as you can see. And that's pretty much, any questions? All right, so let's try it with a second example. Now I'm going to call a Abyssinian, and this should be a cat. So we're going to grab that image, and visualize it. Does look like a cat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and hit predict. And there it is, true. And that's it. So that's a classifier, S similar idea. At the end of the day, everything is just neural networks, but we have done uh, with fast AI, um, transfer learning, fine tuning. Any questions? And you can use this, you know, to train any image classifier that you want. So right here, <laughs> right? Uh, if any problem that you have in image classification, you've got a way now to use a ResNet. Now ResNets, uh, there's also VGGs, they're available in PyTorch mm -hmm. itself. You don't actually have to go to fast AI to use them. That's a, another approach. Okay.
Okay, so those are available from the, it's called a PyTorch hub or something. All right, so that's the example uh, for this one. So let's go ahead and look, as I said, today I'm just starting with like showcasing what fast AI can do. We're just gonna explore some of the ideas. And it, as we start looking at this, um, it'll become you know, more obvious. All right, so I sh I'm gonna just save this. Okay, I'm going to shut down. All right, so let's go back. All right, so the next one, if we go to the, we just did this one, right? We did the cat and dog from basics. I have, we have a segmentation one, movie reviews and the tabular. So let's go, let's do the segmentation. It should be, so fast AI segmentation 2024. Should be this one. So segmentation is actually a, a difficult uh, problem. Object detection is a difficult problem, right? So those are like advanced tasks. So remember that kind of the idea with this course is that you learn these tools so that you can go really quickly and solve complicated problems, right? You know, you want to you need to first segment your images before you do something with them. Or you need to find objects in the image, crop them out, and then do something, right? So those are kind of the ideas. So in this case, uh, FastAI has a segmentation um, tool, right? So we're going to invoke from fastaivision.o, right? So we're going to call that. Once again, we use the ONTAR data. And then URLs, it's got this CamVid Tiny, all right? So camera videos, basically like CCTV or something like that. All right, so the idea is that it's gonna do segmentation to find people, maybe this is something that would be useful for like self-driving cars, right? So if a self-driving car is on the road, it wants to segment in the image that it's getting a person walking by or on a bicycle or something like that. So that's the idea, all right? So this is obviously, um a tool i'm just going to print out some of the images here you can see them um this is just to make some modifications to the file and okay. playing with that so you can see here all it's doing with this lambda function is you add this in the name of the file whatever you want in there okay then let's take a look at once again i'm going to break this up a little bit more so first, the DLS, the data set, data loader set. So I'm going to do control X. Okay. So notice that this is uh, a segmentation data loader. So it's a specific, it's almost like you have to look up in the documentation, fast AI segmentation, right? And understand the parameters that you're, you need to specify, but in general, the path, and this is very specific to uh, segmentation. Okay, so this is loading the data set for that from this cam vid over here. All right, and then notice once again with the given data set, you called a unit learner, which is a special kind of a CNN also. You provide the DLS, provide ResNet 34, and you in initialize the model of learn. Okay. There it is. Then you're going to do fine tuning on this data set. This takes a little bit more fine tuning. You leave it for a second. And it is, you know, learning and optimizing the losses. So obviously you have to read the documentation, but if you had a problem related to segmentation, this would be a nice approach to look at because you wanna leverage transfer learning. Okay, so you wanna le leverage transfer learning. The model is now uh, trained. So now you can go ahead and just print the results. There it is. So, 
so it's basically the the real and the prediction right so this is the annotated data and this is what it detected right so we're just doing a qualitative analysis here but in the annotation basically i guess for self-driving cars they want to know that this is what a traffic light probably right to pay attention to that and then here in this image doesn't seem like it found the you see that but that's basically what it's trying to do it's trying to take an image highlight in blue the thing that it's looking for so that's what image segmentation is called here mm -hmm. I'm looking for one that has people in it, but I don't see anything. Here's a car, but it's not in the real, it's not. However, in this one, it kind of detected something there. Do you see that? So it's not great. I mean, but you know, you need more data, obviously. You probably need more epics, etc. So anyway, if you were doing obviously these kinds of things, you have to do a little bit of work. But if you were doing a segmentation problem, this could be a good starting point. Does that make sense? All right, so you can do very specific things, as I was saying. All right. I don't know if it runs the same ones. Oh, I can increase the number. Max, one, two, three, six. Let's do, let's do 20, if that's not too much. Okay, I was looking for, oh, there's people here, right? No. Well, there's a bus. I think that's also that what it's supposed to predict, but it did not really find it. You see, but that's kind of the idea. Oh, this is the one, yeah, right? People and bicycles, you see that? So it's definitely a data set for cars that, you know, self-driving car should find people there in the prediction doesn't quite seem like it's working very well. Okay, any questions? So that's um, fast AI segmentation. Let's take a look, another example. Uh, All right, so you can do other things. Uh, let's let's go back here. So there is tabular data. So this tabular example. So tabular data is just like, um, you know, you're trying to predict salary given, you know, some demographics of a person, right? So that kind of is referred to as tabular data. It can do that as well. It's got a its own tabular um, component. Let's take a look at that. Here it is, tabular fast AI. So you can click on it. All right, and I just I was just playing with this, but basically you can see it invoke. Let Let's actually run it again. So I'm going to do restart clear output. All right, so from fast AI. So let me. This. So you guys can start to see the overall, you know, approach to getting this to work. So you have your library from Fast AI Tabular Hall. Oops, sorry. Right. Um, here. Okay. So we load the library. Okay. Then once again on tar data, you can see that pattern is starting to emerge, right? So on tar data, then from URLs, you have the adult, you know, data. This is more like demographic things. You have that. You can print on the path once again. It's got this path.ls, but just do that. Right? And you can see that. You can see dot ls. Right. Keep in mind, again, these, these are all like fast AI functions. Okay, so you kind of have to get used to that. Then it creates the DLS, the data. It's going to have parameters that are uh, specific to what you're doing, right? So image classification, tabular data, etc. In this case, tabular data loaders from CSV, 
So you're actually loading this file, adult CSV, okay? Um, and then you specify the Y names is you know what you're trying to predict, the salary. Most likely you indicate categorical features and continuous features. So like age is, you know, 40, and then education level, marital status, et cetera, are categorical types of variables. And then you can even do things like normalize fill missing data, right? So this is very useful because the idea is to help you um, complete or get going really quickly, right? Once again, just like with RLHF, what's the trick with all of this? Should you go in and modify the code? No. Learn how, what format of data it wants, right? Learn what format of data it wants. Put your data in that format, and then it should go through easily. They all have this similar approach. Hug and Face had the similar approach. Does that make sense? Yeah. And just like Hug and Face had um, a trainer, the idea of trainers, they have this idea of learners. I think they literally just copy each other and change the name, right? So you have DLS there, right? Uh, notice this one, tabular learner. Where's the ResNet? Why no ResNet? Uh-huh, and what does that mean? It's images, right? Now you... Joey, who's an expert in this, you can take anything and convert it into an image, right, Joey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. So you could, he did that actually for malware. Was it malware? Yeah, it was malware. Yeah. So you can take any kind of a thing and convert it into an image and then run it through a CNN. That's a thing. But it does require a lot of data, things like that. So that's a nice trick. Uh, but here, since you're not going to be converting it into an image, you you know, then you can't really apply a CNN. So this is just like a normal deep learning algorithm. Do you guys see that? So here, when you do something like this, DLS, um, basically you're just gonna take the data from CSV and you're gonna train it. Notice that it says fit one cycle, um, but there's no transfer learning there going on. You're literally just pre-training on that tabular. So it becomes just like a regular, like if you grab Iris and just train it with Iris. So this is, you can also do this. So if you have any kind of problem, any kind of data set, you can train it with this. Do you see that? And just get going really quickly with fast AI. So basically this is just learn from scratch or pre-training there. Got it? But the idea here is you have, you know, these uh, the data set, the, the, the learners, there's a, there's a nor there's like a generic learner. And then if you notice, they've got these specific learners, image learner, segmentation learner, tabular learner. You really just have to become familiar with the fast AI website for the definitions and what parameters they need. Right, then you do either uh, fit one cycle or fit several cycles, et cetera. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead. So it should now be pre-training. So once again, you see it starts to minimize those losses. See, it's, it's minimizing. And there you go. I was so, I was, if you guys want to test this out later, do an inference. I was kind of like, you can grab the CSV. There it is. And then you can just open it, right? You can just open it from, uh, with a regular if dot read lines. Um, and then I, here I'm just uh, printing like the first three things in that CSV. You can see it's pretty much, you know, you know the, the variables here, very, very standard, and then the, the parameters that are in there. Remember that it's doing a lot of processing. So it's doing categorify, right? That's probably converting the strings to numbers. Fill missing, that's kind of handy. Normalizing the data, which is always a good thing in deep learning. Questions? So again, that's another set of tools. You know, if you, if you have tabular data, definitely try this. Okay. Right, so that's, I, I just kind of wanted to show you that. Um, and then you can, you know, learn. Learn, predict would take in specific input value. So you'd have to process this. Okay, so I'll comment that. All right, any questions? Questions? All right, so this is another example. 
Uh, it even has um, other, well, it has other things, many other things. But let's just do an, one more, I think. I'm going to stop this. Okay, let's go back to the repo now, um, you know, in basics. So we've looked at the first one of uh, just doing a, a generic classifier. We've done segmentation. Uh, we did uh, tabular. There's this example. I'm not going to run it, but just to kind of illustrate, uh, you can also do language processing. Now, why would you want to do language processing here? <laughs> this is not downloading a transformer. I don't know. It's not actually. I can see now. It's not downloading a transformer. Instead, it's using something called AWD underscore LSTM. Do you guys know what that is? Anyone know what an LSTM is? It's a recurrent neural network. So it's one of the techniques in um, deep learning. The recurrent neural networks for language were kind of replaced by transformers. They were like defeated if you, if, you, if you want. But if you have sequential data of some kind, like if you're trying to predict silicon uh, output in a furnace for the next month, you know, an RNN could be the tool. You see, so there's still applications for it. I'll, I'm not saying they're not useful. I'm just saying that for natural language processing for text, transformers just came in and took over. Okay, that's why Huggin Face is literally a lot of about transformers. You can see in this example, um, once again, we can just take a look at it. Obviously, you always, it, you know, you're always kind of doing sentiment analysis as a, as a classic example, right? So here uh, you do uh, from fastai text now, right? Dot all, so that brings in all the functions, et cetera, related to um, text processing. Once again, you define your DLS. In this case, now you're gonna use a text data loader. And then now from folder, Right, it's one of the built-in functions in there. Once again, on tar data, URLs, and our familiar IMDB, right? So you guys are using your IMDB for uh, the RLHF project with transformers and the TLR library, but you can see that uh, FastAI also has this available. Then what do we specify here? Remember, these are things from the FastAI library. In this case, this is a learner but it's a text classifier learner, okay? So they just have many of these. So basically you provided the DLS, which is the IMDB data set. Remember, you guys know how this data set, uh, what this data set looks like, because we've spent a lot of time looking at it. And if you remember, it's got the movie review, right? And it's got a positive or a negative, if you remember. So that's what it's gonna learn here. It's gonna read in that data set, DLS. It uses, as I said, just by looking at this, I know it's a recurrent neural network. It says LSTM uh, neuron type. And it's got you know the metric that it uses, want to use dropout, things like that. Then after that, you do fine tune, right? So in this case, it's doing four fine tune operations. That's learning rate. You can specify it there. And then once it trains, you can see the loss uh, was minimized. And then you give it some text, like I really do not like the movie, The Matrix. So learn.predict, <laughs> you guys like the movie, The Matrix? Well, the, the third one. All right, so then, uh, then <laughs> you you give it that uh, that text, right? Predict, and here actually it predicted that it's positive, which is probably wrong. <laughs> oh. So what does that, what what's the conclusion? Switch to transforms for language process. Okay, got it? Now, keep in mind, there are there was some vision functionality in Transformers, but I have not looked into it. All right. Um, so we I think we have one more example. I want to say. Yeah, this tabular one, tabular example. So let's take a look at that one. Here it is, tabular fast AI. So again, it's gonna be a very similar uh, approach. Mm 
wait, we did that one. What is the one? Movie reviews, then, is the one, right? Yeah, this movie reviews. Let me see. Yeah, so this, yeah, so this is this one. All right, so movie reviews. Maybe I didn't do it on, on here, so. All right, so let's just look at it from the GitHub then. So this example, um, movie reviews is also using this library tabular, okay? But also it uses this thing Colab. Colab is collaborative filtering, okay? It's an area also of deep learning. I'm not very familiar with that area, but basically it has to do with recommender systems, which are a big thing, right? So recommender systems actually can make you money, right? Um, it's the kind of thing that Netflix does, right? So Netflix, what's the goal of a recommender system? It wants to know you like deeply so that when you're on the application, they're going to show you something. What's the goal when they show you something? That you buy it, right? That you click. So for ads, for, uh, you know, like movie review, movies, ratings, et cetera. So that's what uh, collaborative filtering, as I said, I, I've not uh, explored that field that much, uh, but it does have a library for that. In this case, um, it uses collaborative data loaders. You can see that, and it's going to read in a ratings CSV, basically. So you have that available as well. And then notice that if you're doing that kind of problem, there is a learner for that called a collab learner, okay? Once again, you give it the data, right? Here it's predicting basically ratings between 0.5 and 5.5, basically. So once again, once you set the data set in the proper format, you decide what you're training for, you can use, um, you can fine tune on the data, you know, minimize it. And then as you can see here now, it's got movie ID, user ID, a rating, and then it's gonna predict also a rating basically. So I said, this is something that you can, you know, um, consider if you're looking at movie reviews. So basically, fast AI is very broad. It's got all these fields, but in general, most of what we're going to use it for in the course will be for image process, right? It's computer vision. Any questions? So as I said, this is just kind of show you everything. And it, it, there's more. I, I didn't cover everything, but I just wanted to give you an idea of, of the basic pipeline um and all the problems that it can solve okay all right so that should be everything um relate you know related to um the showcase basically later in the semester as we continue we're going to start looking at various other things like data loader your own data so this is going to be obviously if you have your own data set how do you create your own data loader for use in image classification Okay, with fast AI. Um, and there's going to be some specific things here, like image classification. So we'll take a look at that. Um, image segmentation, right? A little bit more detail there. Uh, GANs, you know, image colorization and GANs with fast AI. So this will be uh, one of the homework assignments, if you remember. Uh, regression output. So you can also do that, like predicting, you know, regression values for images like that. The classic example is find the coordinates, right? So, you know, pixels and things like that. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So that's basically the showcase and everything. Now, what we're going to do for the rest of the class today is go over computer vision fundamentals. Okay. So I'm going to go in and just kind of using fast AI, we're going to start getting into, you know, uh, some of these ideas. Okay. Any questions? All right. So let's get started. So you can, uh, for this part, you can reach into again, into the transfer learning repo and just look at computer vision. And then in here, I have the script, uh, 
uh, foundations of computer vision, okay? So we'll take a look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and start a Jupiter with that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to shut down this one. I'm going to start a new one. So this should run on PyTorch 3.8. So I'm going to run this. And so I'm just going to copy from the the repo basically but we're going to we're going to use mnist okay just to kind of get some ideas of how we could approach uh this I'm gonna click on computer uh, fundamentals of computer vision all right so I'm going to go ahead and just start looking at playing basically this is like we're playing with fast ai and um we're at the MNIST data set. Okay, so there we go. So this is going to be MNIST. Okay. Move this down. All right, so in this case, I'm going to uh, fastai.vision.all, right? And I'm going to import NumPy. I'm going to go ahead and run that. All right, then I'm going to use ONTAR. So remember, ONTAR is from FastAI URLs, and I'm going to grab the MNIST data set, which if, if you're not familiar with that, is the handwritten digits data set. Now I'm using the MNIST sample, which is basically just classes seven and three, okay? So not all the digits, but just seven and three. So I'm, I'm gonna grab that as paths. So I run it, and that's basically my data in their validation labels and the trace. Okay, so I'm grabbing that data set from there. Okay. You can then uh, look at some of the functionality, right? We can invoke the ls um, command. I'm gonna do that here. So path basically, right? And for I'm gonna grab from the path, the train set, and then LS just means like directory listing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And you can see we got in the train set, we've got a sevens and we've got a threes folder, okay? So those are the images basically of handwritten digits. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and grab those. The fast AI way. Okay, so I'm going to use path train. I want the threes and the sevens. Dot ls. I want them sorted, and I'm going to assign them to this uh, threes and sevens um, library or variable. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab just one of them. Okay, so I've got basically in the threes, right? Um, I, I'm going to grab one. I'm going to call it IM3 path. And now I'm going to use pill, right? The pill library, uh, Python image library. So image.open this one, and then I'm just going to print it out. And there's a three, right? So that's handwritten digits. Remember, these are 28 by 28. So we got to file them to 784 and they're grayscale. Any questions? All right, so we're gonna play with this these ideas today. Okay, we can take a look at them. Okay. So looking at the image as a NumPy array and PyTorch tensor basically. So you can see here, I am three, which is a pill image, right? Converted into a NumPy array. Then we're gonna slice just a little bit of it so that we can see the values. Remember that in images, what we're looking at is the grace in the grayscale values. Yes. And you can see them right there. Make sense? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more cells. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename this um, in class. Um, 
foundations of computer vision. Okay, so save it. All right, let's keep going. So I did that. Um, now I'm going to All right, so I take IM3, right, which is this pill image, and I invoke this strange function called tensor. That is a fast AI function, okay? So, and basically, fast AI has functions to convert something into NumPy and, uh, or Torch. Could you convert the pill image directly? Yes, but remember, the way that this works is there's always a wrapper over a wrapper over a wrapper. Right, and once again, we slice the image and we can see the values. Basically, you can see that this is a torch uh, object, okay? Let's keep going. Copy that. All right, so I'm gonna invoke the pandas library. I make this into a torch image. Then I'm going to take that image, uh, slice it a little bit. Then I'm going to convert it into a pandas data frame, right? And we can specify uh, for the pandas data frame uh, font size, grayscales, et cetera. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that kind of looks like a number, right? So that gives you intuitively, hopefully, how images are. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. So anyway, you know, as part of fundamentals of computer vision, we, we know this is an image, it's a grid. The values basically indicate the grayscale of the image so that we have something going on here. All right, let's keep going. All right, so we just did this part here. Now we're gonna create a list basically and count it of these samples. So we may wanna use these for training and testing, et cetera, right? So train a model. So first we're gonna do like a very manual um, classifier. Then actually we're gonna look at uh, training with you know the weights and everything. All right, so you can see here, we can take a look. Uh, we have sevens and threes, which we created back here. One more. Here threes and sevens, right? So we have that. We're gonna iterate through it with a list comprehension. We're calling pill image to read in those, those paths, reading in the image, and then we're converting it into a PyTorch tensor. So that effectively gives us two lists of, of PyTorch tensors, one called seven tensors, the other one's called three tensors. And then we just do a, a length of them, okay? And show one of the images basically. Okay, so this is taking a little bit. All right, and there's your three. You can see it there, basically. Okay. And we've got 6,131 of threes and maybe and 6,265 uh, sevens, basically. Okay. Keep going. Well, now we can stack them. Let's take a look. So make all images in each list into one cube. So remember that everything in deep learning is about creating these tensors, right? So for efficient processing, like taking the mean of all the images, et cetera, right? So here, make all images in each list into a cube, i.e. a tensor of dimension three with a type float and also normalized, right? So we're gonna use torch.stack for that. Notice that you can kind of mix in fast AI and torch in here. So seven tensors, three tensors, convert them to float, divide them by 255. It's a quick way of normalizing, right? And then we can print out the shape of the, uh, of the tensor. Let's go ahead and we'll do that. So we have 6,131. 
and they're 28 by 28. That's in this case. All right. So we can also print out the rank, just, just the number of dimensions. So tensor rank, dimensionality of the vector space here of the stack threes. So it's basically three. Keep going. Now this should be fun. Um, we're gonna take the average, right? Take a look at what the average of these images look like. Okay. So notice I'm going to, all right? So we're gonna calculate the mean of all the image tensors. We have them stacked, right? 6,000 by 28 by 28. So I can just like go flatten set of pancakes and create one last pan, one single pancake, which is the average of all of them. Um, so for every pixel position, this will compute the average of that pixel um, over all images. The inside is darker where all images match and blurry where images do not match, right? So there's like uncertainty there. So here you can see it's pretty straightforward. You take stack threes and you take the mean over the zero dimension and that produces the mean. And then we're just gonna showcase the mean. We're gonna take the stack of sevens, take the mean of it, and over the zero is on the zero axis. Because remember, this this is the kind of thing you have to get right, right? For you know, with uh, when tensors and everything, you know, you can do these operations, but you just have to make sure that when you average, you average on the right dimension and things like that. All right. So here I create the mean of threes and the mean of sevens. So we're gonna run those, and that's what in MNIST the average of threes looks like. That the average of sevens look like that. You see that? Does that make sense? Is that a generative model? That image did not actually exist. I generated that, image, right? So imagine one, one classic example of this. What if you had uh, pictures of your whole family, both sides, mom and dad, right? Average all your, on mom's side, average all on dad's side, right? So, you know, um, yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of something you can do. Um, or you can do like, you know, you have a whole bunch of images of dogs, average, and what does an average dog look like? For this to work, obviously the dimensions need to be the same, right? Otherwise it doesn't work. So, I, so if you have images of different sizes, make them the same size, and then you can apply something like this. Okay, any questions? So we're actually gonna build a classifier just on this. Do you think it would be a good classifier? Or do you think it won't work? So we're just gonna compare all images to averages of, of that category, and we're just gonna see how that would work. And that's gonna be a simple classifier, all right? So let's see how that goes. Let's go ahead. I've created these now, so you guys can help me out. Um, I have these. As you know, we can take uh, distances, right? So let's go ahead and do that. You know, the, the beauty of machine learning is that you're almost always thinking about vector spaces in some way or another, right? And, and if, you're, if you have data in vector spaces, that means you have metrics like similarity metrics. So now we will measure the distance between one image and the mean of images for similarity. So get any image from the stack of images, all right, so I'm going to slice one out from the stack. So from the stack threes, I grab one. I'm going to assign it to the variable A3, and I'm going to show it. There's my three. So if I want to build a classifier, I could compare this three to the average threes and to the average sevens, right? And basically, the intuition is that the, the distance is like a similarity. So... Therefore, if I compare this three to this, it's gonna give me a value. And if I compare this three to this seven, it's gonna give me another value. And that, based on that, I should be able to tell how, if it's more similar to the three or more similar to the seven. And I can use that as a classifier. All right, so that's kind of what we're gonna try. Let's see how it goes.
So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And remember, you can use all kinds of metrics uh, for this, uh, you know, the Euclidean distance, for instance. Yeah, you can see this. These have different norm uh, names like L1 norm distance, calc L2 uh, norm, RMSC, et cetera. But basically they are these equations, right? So if you can see here, you take, you know, how does it work? You have one that uses the absolute value and one that uses the square root, okay? As long as you're consistent in the metric, it'll work, right? All you have to decide is, you know, the, the distance that you get is it, it indicates either being closer or further away. So here we take a look at the value. So A3, that's this image, minus mean three, right? Take those differences, calculate the absolute value, take the mean of it. Do you guys see that? That will return one value, okay? Or I can do A3, this one, minus mean three, which is this one, right? square it, mean, square root, okay? So now I've got these two values and I'm gonna print them out and let's see what we get. You can see we get basically a metric. Now we are comparing A3 to mean three. So I'm comparing this one to this one with two distance, different distance metrics, okay? Does that make sense? Now, the next step, probably, and, and we'll stop with that. We have two minutes left of, of this first half. Now, the what makes sense is to compare another, uh, the three maybe, to the other average, right? What would you expect of the result? What would you expect? Basically, we're comparing these values, right? So here, we're comparing A3 to mean three. And we got 0.1, let's say, on the, or 0.20 on the, uh, our, uh, on this one, the, MSC. So now let's take a look here. So we did this one, right? So now I'm going to do this here. Okay, I'm going to repeat the exercise. Now, this should say now. Now compare to the single three, the single three image, the single three image to the sevens mean. Right, so before we took A3 and compared it to mean three, obviously there should be similar. And then we compare A3 to the mean of sevens, which is this one over here, right? We're gonna repeat the, the exercise with the same two equations, exactly as they were. And what would you expect the results to, to be like? Do you think these values are gonna be higher or lower, respectively? Higher, why? Right, they're more different. Yeah, exactly. Good, good. So there we go. Are they higher? Yes, right. So if you're focusing on um, squared here, the this one, you look at 0.20 versus 0.30. So basically an, an intuition for this is saying that the three is more like this one than this one. So it's a type of a classifier, right? You see that? Any questions? So <laughs> that's basically an idea. So we're gonna try to just do this classifier. Um, it's 6.20, so let's take a 10 minute break and we will continue um, this session of co uh, computer vision fundamentals in the next half, okay? Stop the recording.